Okay, everybody, today we're going to start off by talking about one of the four groups of arthropods um, that we'll be learning about, which is the crustaceans. Uh, so let me get going here from the beginning. Um, so crustaceans uh, have a big diversity uh, to them, and you can see some examples here. These are certainly not complete. Barnacles, crabs, crayfish, which look like kind of lobsters, but they live in fresh water. We have them here in Utah, lobsters krill, hermit crabs, prawns, shrimp. Woodlouse is also what we call roly-poly. This is um, our only land terrestrial crustacean that we have here in Utah. Um, the manta shrimp, which is one of our creature features earlier this year, um, and different types of land crabs as well. Um, the other one that I want to mention, there's, there's a lot that I'm not mentioning, um, but we do have another crustacean that's pretty famous here in Utah, and that's the brine shrimp out of the Great Salt Lake. Okay, so um, today's PowerPoint is very, very short. I just want you to learn just a few basic characteristics of crustaceans. Um, now, first of all, remember they belong to the phylum Arthropoda, the arthropods, um, which that word loosely translates into have jointed legs or jointed appendages. So crustaceans share um, these characteristics. They have two or three body sections. They have five or more pairs of legs. They have two pairs of antenna, or antennae, and they have gills. Um, and this is true even for the roly polies uh, that we have here in Utah that live on land. They still have to have moisture uh, because of these gills. So a crustacean's body segment has a pair of legs or another type of appendage attached to it. The various types of appendages function differently and crayfish, which I'll have a picture for you here soon. Um, appendages that are attached to the head include two pair of antenna, um, and those antenna are used for the crayfish to smell, to taste, and to touch, um, and also for keeping balance. The crayfish uh, uses most of its leg appendages for walking. However, the front pair of legs uh, is used for obtaining food and also defending itself. Um, and this little weird uh, red guy you see down here in the bottom right hand side of your screen, the screen this is a crayfish. Um, and these big old claws that he has, um, that's that front pair of legs that he has, um, that he uses to get food and also to defend himself. And then you can see one of the pairs of antennas right here, really long. Um, and then he has a smaller pair that's just ventral to that. Now, crustaceans can live in a lot of different places. Uh, they live in the sea, so the ocean, rivers, lakes, puddles, um, and even on land. Uh, they can be even found in the deepest parts of the oceans and along coastlines. So they have a big variety of habitat that you can find these animals in. Now, one of the interesting things about these guys, um, the crustaceans, is their life cycle. So most crustaceans, such as crabs, barnacles, and shrimp, they begin their lives as a microscopic swimming larvae. Um, so they're part of the plankton. The bodies, the bodies of these animals do not resemble that of adults. So they look very, very different than adults. And then when they change into adults, uh, that process is called metamorphosis, okay? Um, and here's this picture of this crayfish I was promising you. So you can see what they have. Um, so they have this segmented out, um, abdomen this tail fin with these appendages called uropods. Um, and uh, we call this also the whole thing, we call it the telson. It has these four pair of walking legs. And then it has uh, the big old pair of claws. And one of the names, a uh, fancy science name for a type of claw is a chelioped. And then they have a hard carapace, so that's like a hard outer shell. Um, and then we have those antenna up front here as well. So this long pair and this short pair. Then they have the rostrum, um, and we'll be talking about what this is, but this is like where their brain is and where they do a lot of their neural processing, okay? And a couple of eyes. And honestly, you guys, these things taste really good. I've eaten a lot of them. They're uh, only about six inches long. They're not native to Utah, so when, they cat when you catch them, they want you to eat them to get them out of our ecosystems. Um, but they look like a freshwater lobster, so if you like lobster, you would like these guys too. Um, and you mostly, when, most people when you eat them, you eat just this tail part here. 
Now, back to their life cycle. Sorry about the diversion. Um, this process of metamorphosis, what it is, anytime you see that word, what I always tell students is just think to change. Uh, but this is a process in which an animal's body undergoes dramatic changes uh, in form during its life cycle. So metamorphosis, think caterpillar going to a butterfly. Caterpillar does not look anything like a butterfly. That process is called metamorphosis. Now, as a crustacean grows, once it's in this adult form here, they need to get rid of that hard shell that arthropods have, that exoskeleton. Um, that hard shell, because it doesn't grow, becomes too small for them. So all crustaceans molt, and that's that process where they can get rid of that old shell. So they cast off the old shell, and then there's a new one that's slightly bigger that's waiting for them underneath. Now at first, when, when this process happens, when they come out of that old shell, um, the, the shell that's bigger that was underneath it is actually a little soft. And so they're not protected at that time because that's what that shell does, right, is protect them from predators. So that's a very dangerous time in their life cycle is when they molt. Uh, crayfish have marks on their shells that stay each time they molt. And these marks are each on each crayfish that is shell are unique. Okay, and so that's like almost like a fingerprint. Um, now, in class today, um, I'm also going to be showing you a couple of video clips that go along with learning a little bit about crustaceans. Um, a couple of them are really interesting. There's a crustacean called a horseshoe crab um, that has blue blood that ends up being extremely important in vaccines. So think of the COVID vaccine that we uh, got just released recently. Um, and so we'll talk about why that's important. Um, also, I have a Shape of Life video that talks about marine arthropods, so which are mostly crustaceans. Um, and then uh, the last one that I'll have for us is um, about the Japanese spider crab, which is the world's largest crustacean. Uh, so we'll look at a few different video clips on crustaceans just to get a better idea of um, some of the specific characteristics of this arthropod. Okay, that's it. Talk to you later.